with my last thing. All right, that, that's that's the plan. Hey, I'm Obi, that's Ed, and we are drinking from the Garden Host, your favorite podcast guest wherever you get podcasts, including Apple Podcasts and Google and um, Alexa, and uh, that's a lot of ants. Ed, how are you today? Ah, uh, you know, Obi, uh, you know, I, I guess it's not a secret of when we're, we're uh, recording this because, you know, when people are listening to it, we it's not live. And so I'm a little miserable. This weather with the rain and the cold and the wind, I don't know, sucks. <laughs> oh, it has been horrific. It's horrific. Uh, yeah, I have a lake in my backyard right now. Not the best. Not the best. I, yeah, I just don't get. Uh, I just don't get why when it rains, it just rains a lot. It doesn't. There's no such thing as like a little bit of rain anymore. It's like a lot of rain. Nothing says I'm an old curmudgeon like complaining about the fucking weather. That's that's, that's for sure. You're, you're getting that grumpy old man down pat. Well, not only am I complaining about the weather, but I find myself checking the weather multiple times during the day. When it's raining, I check the, how much rain do we have. I, I check the rain gauge. I check what's the forecast. I know more about how much rain we're supposed to get and how much rain we already got this week, this month, <laughs> this year than any normal person should know. So I don't know if that means I'm old or I live in a flood zone. I'm not sure what it means, but well, either way. No, no, I check my weather. I check the weather where my kid is. I check the weather of places I'm planning on going in the next few months. And because it's always beautiful there, I always see it, but it's like in New Orleans. So for those wondering, wherever you are right now, in New Orleans is 71 degrees. Yeah, I wish Sunny, I no rain. I wish, yeah. I, I wish I was there. So... So, Obi, this leads me to the, what, what I wanted to talk about because uh, I, a girl dad, we've talked about this before on, on the podcast about being a girl dad, boy dad, the differences. But I, I this is, I got to tell you something. I, so Friday, there's a dance, a ninth and 10th grade dance that my daughter's going to go to. So well, let's go into the whole thing about going to high school dances, stag, right? Like, you know, back in the day, you had, if you didn't have a date, you didn't go to the dance. Now, Go to the dance. You go to the prom. You don't need a date, right? So anyway, we'll get over that because I think we've already bitched about that on other uh, other podcasts. But here's what gets me. I get her home from practice. I just complained about the weather. It's miserable out there. It's pouring. It's cold. It's windy. And she says to me, hey, Dad, can we go to Walgreens? I got to get some self-tanner. What the heck are you talking about? Well, I got it. I got to dance. I'm like, all right, we'll go to Walgreens and get self-tanner. I'm thinking, how much could that cost? We get to Walgreens. uh, And by the way, while we're driving to Walgreens, she tells me about her nail appointment that I need to make for her mom needs to make for her because she's got to get her nails done. And when is she going to get her nails done? Because she doesn't have that much time. The dance is on Friday and today's Wednesday. How does that all work out? I'm like, listen, you got to talk to your mom about that. I'm not around. I got a funeral to go to tomorrow. I I can't be dealing with your nail appointment. Well, dad, uh, is that anyway? We finally get to Walgreens. We get in there. She's picking up shampoo, conditioner. She got some other glow stick. $72 later, I get out of Walgreens with self-tanner and a bunch of other stuff. That's on top of the dress I got her. That's on top of the dance ticket. And I haven't even paid for this nail appointment, Obi. It's a ninth grade dance. When does it stop? It stops when she leaves gets a job or gets married. And even then, I don't know if it truly stops. I'll let you know uh, soon. I'll let you know soon if it ever, you know, if I, if I reach a stop point. But are boys this expensive to have this, in the house? They're not this expensive. Well, it, it, listen, so we have a prom coming up, right? So we have all the, all the accoutrements uh, of just the prom that, you know, Everybody who's going to prom has to split the prom house, the limo. If there's a limo, uh, the prom, the prom meetup party. If if they are not being paid for by somebody else's parent, and then the tux, which is not nearly as expensive. The hair, he he does have to get his hair done, uh, but it's not it's not that expensive. Maybe twenty thirty dollars more than just his regular haircut. But what could cost them would be he'd have to buy both tickets, but. 
Uh, in this case, her mother is buying the ticket, so he's getting out of buying the ticket. The corsage, he's got to buy her the corsage, but she's got to reciprocate with the with the boutonniere. So, no, listen, there's not. We know there's not as much product in terms of being a guy. I mean, listen, you just started with your first product at over fifty with your ice cream. You know, that's you've waited to fifty to get your first product. So yeah, you get to wait longer when you're a guy on all these products. By the way, when I was in Walgreens, I was checking out the eye cream section. There's some there's some products that I didn't see when I went to um, Ulta. Walgreens okay. might have better stuff. Like they got eye cream there. I didn't buy it because I'm not out of my other eye cream, but they got eye cream with ca caffeine. And I've been reading, you really want the caffeine because that eliminates the puffiness, Obi. Okay. So, so my next purchase will be eye cream with caffeine in it. Just I want everybody to know that. I've I've started with the mustache wax. You're waxing I, your your mustache. I'm, I'm waxing my mustache. I'm gonna try to okay. get the, the 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 full the full curl <laughs> the full. So, up. so what no one can see here is and and this maybe this goes back to why we should be on TikTok. Is <laughs> no one can see that you actually think you're gonna be Raleigh Fingers. Um. So I mean, I don't know if you were paying attention, but uh, a few weeks ago, it really it gotten out of control and it was getting brittle. Because I wasn't waxing it, but I could curl it right, right out when I came out of the showers. I could almost get Raleigh. Uh, but it was brittle. And so I read a little, did the internet, they said, I am gonna have to trim it down, start and then start waxing it now so it can be healthier. So yeah, I'm starting to get uh beard and mustache products uh, going on. So, so so that's that's interesting. You're you're reading about um how to get a Raleigh fingers mustache. I'm just figuring out how to keep my eyes look young. Uh, oh, I figured I am, if you're looking at my mustache, you're not looking at my eyes. I am now I am now moisturizing my face too, Obi, on top of the eye cream because as Guy said to me in Vegas, it's it's maintenance. And if you're not gonna do it, no one else is gonna do it. So I've now found that uh, I'm moisturizing my face too. Oh, I've I've always moisturized my head because you know I have no hair. Yeah, I, yeah, I have yeah, to, yeah, I have to moisturize yeah. up there. Yeah. So yeah, moisturizer's been going on for a while. But what I find most ironic about me finally moisturizing my face is when I open up the drawer uh, to my vanity in my bathroom, there are like six things of men's face moisturizer that I've gotten in my Christmas stocking each of the last, one each in the last six years that my wife has been giving me, and I just haven't used it. So, you know, it's not as though it hasn't been suggested slightly to me over the past. But yeah, so I'm going all in on that. So Obi, anyway, I think girls are high maintenance. Yes, I'm becoming high maintenance, but uh, I just blew my mind that I went to Walgreens today and um, and I got to pay for a nail appointment, all for a ninth grade dance. You know what's going to be interesting? To hear what our um, listeners have to say about this. And that brings me to this subject. I, I'm actually a little impressed with what our following has become. And when I say our following, I mean our active following that interacts with us. So I, I got a bunch of names here. We know our webmaster listens all the time. I believe your mom still listens all the time. Your nemesis, your nemesis husband, Ruckus, who has uh, informed me that he's now leaving comments on the actual website. Uh, the hot neighbor is making comments that they're listening. And the dingo, we know that he's listening a lot. Also, um, some people who I don't know if they listen all the time, but if you guys are listening all the time, make it be known. But people who I know are listening are the preacher's kid. He knows who he is. Uh, Mr. Z has definitely made comments on my posts. So I've interpreted that to mean he's listening. Uh, Florida man used to listen a lot. I don't know. We haven't heard from him at all, either in text or at all. But Florida man, if you're still listening, uh, give us a shout out. Keep running with your seltzers. And then... Uh, I'd like to say that we have another person who gave me a wink and a nod and told me they're going to become a listener after listening. I'm going to call you a, a man of all seasons, uh, although you may only be a man of one season. Hopefully you can figure out who you are. But he came to me, walked right up to me and said, yeah, it's it's difficult in the office when I only have to use one space. I had two spaces. I was raised on it. But one space, I looked at him and said, yeah, I'm listening now. So we're growing. And I, it excites me that we have fans who, who reach out to us and comment us. Uh, some of those comments on the website are getting a little mean. I might have to start ignoring them as we get super popular with some of the mean people out there. 
but it's exciting to see it's growing and we're getting real feedback. So thank you to our little thriving community. So when, you know, our, what should we call them? Our, our hose, our garden hosers, the, our suckers, our suckers. <laughs> suckers. So our yep, suckers. They're sucking off the hose. <laughs> oh, that's that could, yeah, that's illegal in a couple States, I think. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we might that, that 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 listen, we suck. I don't think our fans suck. We might need a better name than suckers. Yeah, I will tell you this. I, I particularly like the feedback we got from the hot neighbor. Uh it was it was well written and a great name. Um I love the fact, although I'm not sure if it it is it the same person that keeps leaving comments and just keeps changing their name, or are we having different people? Because some of the comments seem to have similar themes, if you know what I'm saying. I think I think a lot of the comments on on uh, are produced by our webmaster. Not a lot, but I think I think the person who changes his, the name a lot is the webmaster because uh, because he's you know he worked hard on that website. We truly appreciate it. It's starting to pick up steam, and I I think he wants to generate comments. I think people see comments; they they deliver comments. I know Ruckus. I know who that is. Uh, he's an old school uh, follower, one of our first. Uh, he's made comments to you before. Uh, one of my biggest fans, and now he's on the website, so he doesn't have to go directly to me. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, so Obi, I, you know, again, we people should, you know, because we have a number of silent listeners, and what I mean by that are the ones that just give you that wink and a nod, like, yeah, two spaces sucks, right? You're like, holy, yeah. you're like, holy shit, you listen. <laughs> I didn't even know you listen. You're like, so we got that. We got the guy, you know, at my work who made a comment in a meeting the other day about peeing on a car. Um, with a wink and a nod at me, you know, like, <laughs> like that's the worst insult you can get is someone pees on your car. So we know where that comes from, right? And right. so, and then, and then I got a phone call last week as we're talking about feedback from my father who never listens. He says our audio sucks. It's not loud enough. Now he's deaf, right? He's this disabled veteran from Vietnam. So he says our audio sucks. Meanwhile, he just can't hear, but he, he actually called me up to tell me the whole two spaces thing sucks. And uh, so it was interesting. You listen, but um, here's the here's the comments that you could get on our website. And I just this actually, I say LOL a lot just so people think I'm not you know I'm busting their chops. I'm not serious. Very rarely do I laugh out loud, but I did laugh out loud at this. So uh, for those of you listening, you may not know this, but Obi screwed up last episode, and he forgot he he published it like a week later. Like so when he when he loaded the web the uh, the episode up. He did publish March 29th or something instead of March 22nd. So he thought it was going to go out at 6 a.m. on the next day. It didn't. And so I talked to him about it and he realized what happened. So I put a poll out there that just said, Obi had his head up his ass this week and published the episode 12 hours late. Dot, dot, dot. And then I gave a poll. Like, what did you think? The first answer I put was that bastard. And then I put, I didn't notice what could possibly be distracting Obi. And uh uh-oh, Ed is bullying OB again, right? So we got some good answers. Six people said that bastard. Two people said Ed is bullying again and one on on the others. But I love the comment that just basically said, uh, (laughs) uh, I didn't notice it was posted late, but I still voted for that bastard because I laugh out loud when I saw it. The (laughs) fact is, when I saw that comment, I laughed out loud. Nice. Fair trade. Good work, listeners. Making Ed laugh. I truly appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I was a bastard, and I'll try to do better this week. So, but the sad part about that is the person didn't even notice it was published late, but they liked our poll. So the I so the here's the thing: if you're listening to the to the episode and and we post this out, you got to go to our website, um, and uh, that's what you got to do, and leave us comments, feedback. Vote in the polls. Um, it's all good stuff. Yes. And that that webpage is Vercel, V-E-R-C-E-L dot gardenhose.com. We're right there. We love it. And uh, with that, Ed, you, you told me you had another subject to talk about. So those are people who are still listening have more to comment on. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think this is another one that goes in the category of the two spaces, right? So, you know, what we learned was if you're still putting two spaces after a period, you're older than 37 years old. Well, something I something came up on my Internet feed over the last week. It just like just really struck me. And it was that vinyl sales. So albums, vinyl that we used to listen to on music a long time ago are year over year for the last decade have grown in sales each year. 
So there are more albums being sold today than there were a year ago, which was more than the year before that, which was more than the year. So there's like a like a really steep line if you put a graph out there. And I just am shocked with the ease of streaming and digital music that people are actually going out of their way to buy vinyl. I thought it was a niche thing, but it's growing and growing. So Obi, I just want to get your thoughts on that. So I have two distinct thoughts on that. Uh, one of those thoughts is that I think some of those vinyls that are being sold are being sacrificed to DJs to scratch. Although I know that they now have electronic scratchers and whatnot, but I think that some of it, but I have been told again and again and again, and I do not know if this is true, that sound recording on vinyl uh, catches all of the sound that the um, musicians were attempting to get. And some of it is lost on digital. I do not know if that's true. It seems, especially in modern re recording, odd to me because I know the recording process that we're using is digital. And I don't know what you get, how things are lost. Uh, but that is the the theory from the music files is that, or uh, the vinyl files, if you will. And I, I they're, they're probably spreading the word in... People are probably believing them and maybe it's true. So that might be the reason that vinyl is continuing to grow, despite the fact that I haven't seen a real record player uh, since my parents moved and got rid of their record player when they moved. They still have their records, but I don't think they have their record player. So, Obi, I, I know people say, oh, it sounds better, which I do call bullshit on. I listen to digital music all the time and it sounds perfectly good to me. And here's the other thing. Even if an album sounded slightly better, the inconvenience of having to sit there and load it up and split the sides is far outstripped by the ease, the, the, the comfort and the convenience of having the, the song on my phone. But here's the thing. $1.3 billion in album sales last year, vinyl album sales last year, up from $1.2 billion the year before that. And in 2014, it was only $244 million. So over a billion dollars more in the span of 10 years in, of, of albums. Now, I did see Billie Eilish speak up on this topic earlier this week. And she says, really, it's a money grab that's coming out from artists. And it's unsustainable for the earth, right? Because vinyl albums aren't really recyclable. I guess they're recyclable. But if you throw them away, they don't degrade. And what she says is there's certain artists who, who, who release the same album on vinyl, but like in 15 different versions. Like this collector version, this collect, this color, that color, this picture on it to get their fans to buy like fifteen different of the same vinyl album. Have you heard that? No, but but that does sound believable because there's always one of the things I know that exists is a small record store day or something like that, and I know artists will drop limited edition vinyls on that day. And so that would suggest to me that we're not really talking about vinyls to listen. We're talking about vinyls as Funko Pops. Like you go, you buy the collector's edition that they're, you know, one of 500, maybe it's signed and maybe it's not the, I don't know how much a CD is anymore because I just pay my monthly fee to Apple, but the $17.99 that a CD record usually is, and now it's $35.99, and then you're paying twice as much for the same music. You're never going to listen to it. And it's going to go up on your wall. That may be what's happening. I don't know what's happening for sure, but uh, you know, maybe it's it's just a collector's item, and that's what Billie Eilish sounds like she's saying is, you can get the purple one, the green one, the orange one, the pink one, because it's all different color plastics. But it's all the same songs, and you're never going to open it. But it's got a see-through cutout in the in the uh, in the case. So you can see which color one you got. Yeah. I, again, I, I don't get it. So I wanted to bring it up because I'm old. I guess it's a young kid thing. I, I mean, listen, my daughter came home from her grandparents a couple of like. A, this is going to piss my parents off when they hear this. But she got the Zach Bryan album. She came home. The turntable she got for Christmas a couple of years later, she pulls it out. And wouldn't you know, the damn thing don't work. <laughs> don't work. You turn it on and the thing doesn't spin. So, I, yeah, so I guess you got to buy a new one. Well, guess what? She got all those songs on her phone. So guess who doesn't have a new turntable? Her. She's got $72 of hair product instead of a turntable. Wait, it's more than just a turntable. 
because it's a turntable, a receiver, and maybe speakers, like maybe your maybe your phone or your iPad or your tablet or computer is going out to a good set of speakers. But the one thing that probably is true is that these people who have vinyl probably have a good receiver, a good amp, their speakers set up throughout their room in a way that really makes the music resonate that instinctively or not instinctively uh, you don't do right away with your phone, right? Like that's one thing I know I lost with the phone is the, when I was single still, I had my speaker. I, I had the five, four speakers, five speakers, whatever it was, can't remember in my tiny little bedroom all set up. They didn't have to be loud to create a wonderful music box that the phone just doesn't produce with its one little JBL speaker, you know? So that's another thing that maybe they're getting that is being lost. But other people, I'm sure, I imagine some young people set it up properly, get go out, they get a full surround sound and stereo system. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's the other old school thing. I, the next thing I'm going to read is that stereo systems, like rack systems are growing in sales, right? Like, Nobody has that crap anymore either, right? We have right. A, an, a we have a, a Bluetooth speaker, or maybe we have a Sonos system set up with has like one speaker per room. There's no such thing as two speakers in a room unless it's hooked to your unless it's hooked to your TV. Then you're gonna have you're the right. whole surround sound. That's where we spend our money, right? But I, and again, it, it's just interesting. I'm not. I don't own vinyl. I'm never gonna own vinyl. Makes no sense to me. Um, but I'd love to hear other people's feedback on. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, my experience with vinyl growing up was that it sucked. The charm is that we sucked. I'm Obi. That said, can't wait to get your feedback from this exciting episode. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>